Wallam Buikas as an an attack to hal as an Billisha akar os kornadola and you. Just to say at the start, I was very proud to stand with the factories at the factories with the farmers in six different locations uh, throughout the state over the last number of weeks. And I think the farmers have actually shown many of us in this country how important it is to stand up for what's right and what's just uh, in our lives and to fight for uh, a proper income uh, for our families. And <clears throat> for me, the, the, the problem is very simple with regards to this particular crisis. The beef industry is an asymmetric industry. It's an oligopoly. We have a small number of massive factories <coughs> who have enormous power over every single condition of sale, including price itself. And we have tens of thousands of farmers who have no influence. They're so small, they have no influence on any condition of sale, uh, in, including the price. It's completely asymmetric, it's, it's unbalanced, and it's broken, and it's distorted. And you see that by the fact that one factory can actually make a profit of 170 million euros in one year, be tax resident in Luxembourg, have 0.5% tax, have assets of 3.5 billion euros, and expect the farmer to bring a beast to the gate at below cost. That is, it's shocking in its injustice, that you could make so much profit and then expect that the supplier brings the product to the gate at a loss. So by participating in, the, in this market, Farmers are making a serious loss. And the average wage of a farmer now is between 8,000 and 10,000 euros. And it's only at this level because of the fact that there's, there's a subsidy. There's now that the subsidy makes 140% of the income of a farmer. That's a startling fact, 140%, which shows that if the farmer were to stop participating in the market, the farmer would actually be much better off. And this injustice is black and white. I believe it's an absolute dis disgrace that this injustice continues. And I believe that your government is an absolute disgrace for presiding over this particular injustice as well. And Fianna Gael's attitude and Fianna Fáil's attitude to this has been one of laissez-faire. The Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael government have sat on their hands right through this process. Sat on their hands like it's not their fault. And it, it amuses me that Fine Gael states that they are the party of the free market. And yet, in this country, we have so many markets that are absolutely distorted. The beef market is not the only market that's distorted. The insurance market is distorted. It took the European Union to come in to decide to investigate the cartel that exists in that sector. The housing market is absolutely distorted. It seems to me that there's nobody with an econ economics background at all in the Fine Gael benches to be able to sort out some of the distortions that are happening within this market. I spoke to a senior Fine Gael TD in the middle of the crisis and that Fine Gael TD said that the expectations of the farmers were unreasonable because they expected a price that was above the break-even point. That was a senior Fine Gael TD. It's an amazing thing that a person stating that they are representing the farmers believes the expectation to make a living from your livelihood is absolutely unreasonable. Um, the fact that we have Tagusk, who will tell you now that uh, currently one third of farmers in the state are making a living out of the farm. Another third of farmers are only making a living out of the farm because they're working off the farm. And one third of farmers are making a complete loss, which means they're being pushed into poverty, they're being pushed into debt, and they're being pushed off the farm. And I want to say think this thing as well, I don't believe all the factories are the same. I think some of the factories saw this particular crisis as an opportunity to allow maybe some of the smaller factories to go bust so that when they lost their contracts, they could actually tidy up those contracts and win those contracts uh, themselves. Most of the speeches here from the Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael government tonight, I believe have been fiddling around the edges. Because if we don't talk about the base price here, if we don't talk about the fact that farmers have to make a living from uh, their activities, we are not at the races. We're not even being serious about the problem that's happening here. So this week I have introduced a, a new bill. Uh, it's a bill that would ban the below-cost selling of beef on an interim basis, on a period of time in which the Consumer and Competition Authority could do the job that it's meant to do and make sure that there is balance within that particular market. 
it has a sunset clause and it would fall into abeyance after a year if that market situation is fixed. And I would encourage TDs from all across uh, the chamber to support that particular bill. And also to know that the beef plan themselves are coming into the AV room this week, uh, uh, this Thursday at 11 o'clock. And again, I would encourage the TDs to come in and listen to them on this. But there's much more to this. I believe that the, these particular protests, they were about beef and they were about the price of beef. But there were actually much more. They were about the feather that broke the camel's back. I believe it was a form of insurrection in rural Ireland, to be honest. There is a, people talk about 2020 vision. The Fianna Fáil Fine Gael government that we have have M50 vision. They cannot see beyond the M50 in this country. And we have an over-concentration of wealth, infrastructure, population in one small part of the country, while we have population uh, uh, falling in the rest of the country. Young people are leaving the rest of the country in the droves. And why wouldn't they? How would you take over a farm that by participating in it drives you into poverty? And, you know, I, I believe it's, it's, it's really important that the government starts to listen to that. The anger is not gone over this whatsoever. Many of the farmers were so economically hammered that they had no choice but to return to the farms. And the protests may be over, but this crisis is by no means over. And I would encourage the government, do not squander this opportunity to fix this crisis. Take your hands from underneath your behinds and start to roll up your sleeves and get working on this particular issue. This is a crisis that we have to fix because we cannot allow a situation where one part of the country is overheating and new schools are being built and in the rest of the country we see schools, services, guard stations, banks, uh, post offices being closed down. We need proper regional development and we need to make sure that rural Ireland has a living in the future. Gerd